Welcome back to another video with Yarn is the Second Language. That lady right there is powering up is Miss Nikki. Oof. And I am Princeton. Welcome to the show, everybody. We got some cool stuff today for all you cool kids in the, in the area. No. The internet area? Well, that's the only area we're talking to. Okay. All right. <laughs> First, let's discuss this shirt, shall we? What do we got there? Power up shirt. <laughs> Wait. Okay. I don't want to get. <laughs> That's as far as we need to go. Okay. <laughs> well, in case you wanted to see it. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Goodness. The family show, simmer down. Goodness. Simmer. And I am knitting, so don't get don't get crazy. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're talking about whips in progress, and I'm a little amped up. Family show. I'm a little amped up. Simmer. And uh, finished objects. So why don't you go ahead and start with what you're working on? So I am working on a hat. Um, oh, and I didn't bring the yarn. This is out of. <laughs> I know. This is out of some old stash. This is a wool and alpaca blend. And this is the Tamarugo hat. I had to write that down by Anna Saskia. And it is a very cool technique. I am enjoying it immensely. It's only a four row pattern, so I've kind of got it memorized, but goes pretty quickly. This is a worsted yarn on size seven needles and I am enjoying it immensely. This is for a friend of mine who actually lives in a cold place so they may need that extra warmth that alpaca provides. Um, unlike us who gets like cold like three days out of the year. Right. right. But very easy knit. Um, free pattern on Ravelry. Again, I don't want to say it wrong, but I'm sure I will. Tamarugo. How would you say that? Tamarugo. That's what I would say. So there's a whole story about that it's a tree in Chile, maybe? And that's Where? Chile. 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 They hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's right. But free pattern on Ravelry. Very enjoyable knit. Um, cool. So while we're talking about that, I might as well say I have a finished project, the Tamarugo <laughs> Buy some more. This is some more uh, wool and alpaca blend. Very warm. Very, very warm. So I am going to send these to a couple in a cold, cold place. So they shall have matching, sort of matching hats. Cool. So, okay. Can you please, I have a question. Can you please show me the top of that red hat? I didn't know it was going to take that long. Okay. <laughs> so can you give us an idea on how you finish the tops of hats? What do you mean? Like when you decrease or do you think I'm, I'm going to put a pom-pom or what? When you decrease and I, I know a lot of people will keep decreasing to the point where they have hardly any space so I think to work just in. just end it with about 12 stitches to decrease. And then you just take your needle and your thread and you draw your um your your top of your hat closed. So it's a very small hole, but you kind of just draw your needle through your remaining stitches to close it up. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna come back to that. I'll tell you why I asked that in a minute. Okay. So again. So, but those look really cool. I like that. Um the the texture of that. It is highly textured and I like that. It's a very cool um, and easy texture element to this. Um, these strands are, you know, adding a little bit of warmth, a little bit of texture, a little bit of bounce to it. And I loved it. So I finished this one and immediately cast this one on. Okay. So 
I am enjoying it immensely. So I have another question for you. I'm full of questions today. Okay. So your brim. Yes. How do you determine how long to make it? I like something that's going to cover my ears. So two inches at a minimum. If I'm going to do a fold up brim, that would be at least four, four and a half inches or so. Um, I didn't, I think I did, that looks like about two, two and a half, two and a quarter inches. I just knit till I feel like, okay, I like it. How do you determine? So, one more question before I answer that. Okay. <laughs> How do you determine the length of the, the so, brim? The width, like, I mean, the, the diameter of the hat? Yeah. Um, the pattern tells you, but I've worked with, I've made a lot of worsted weight hats. And I, my go-to is kind of like 80 stitches. I feel like that's stretchy enough. And this is a, I digress from the pattern already. It said to do a knit one, purl one. This is a knit one through the back loop, purl one, because I think it makes it stand out a little bit more. And um, 80 is kind of my go-to. And that's just from knitting a lot of worsted weight hats on, you know, these same needles that I have. So um somewhat is trial and error if you've got somebody with a lot of hair a lot of you know a big hairstyle or somebody that just wants you know they don't want like a beanie hat they want something a little more slouchy um I, I can go plus or minus five ten stitches somewhere in there with worsted uh with dk and other things like that you know you're going down needle size you're going down um yarn weight it, it's trial and error, but I've knit a lot of hats, so I just kind of automatically start with 80. And if a pattern tells me to do a lot more, a lot fewer, I'm kind of eyeballing it like, mm, okay, but so 80's been good to me, so that's where I go. Okay, okay. And there are people, you know, you can uh, use a measuring tape and measure around someone's head or something and measure on your own head and kind of estimate and if your yarn's gonna if you feel like the yarn's gonna grow um alpaca yarns do grow a little bit and that's you kind of want that because alpaca is such a light fiber that's a lot of space for air warm air from your body to get trapped and that's what keeps you warmer that layer of air against your body so if your alpaca hat grows just a tiny bit, maybe that's not so bad. Um, and some yarns don't stretch and grow at all. So you just kind of have to know your yarn and know your recipient. Well, what a beautiful answer. <laughs> the right answer. So I want to move on to mine real quick. Okay. And I'll also explain why I asked. Ugh all those questions. So I am, uh, I've got an idea and um, I'm going to be making hats with my new idea, but I need to get back into the hat making mentality. So I made a hat also and here it is. Uh -oh. So I, I made frozen on my... the brim, the flip. Bring it... uh oh, am I frozen again? There you go. Now you're back. Okay, okay. I like so I've made it to where you can Ooh, flip it up. Uh-huh. And uh, this right here is about two, two and a half inches. Uh -huh. So this is about four or so inches. Um, I did my top of the hat a little different. Mm -hmm. um, it looks kind of envelope-y where it's kind of meeting in two spots to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I did the the star thing where you do the you do the star and then you you draw it. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had pulled out some of my older hats. This worked out way better than um, decreasing till you get a tiny little circle. Uh huh. Especially I just finished this today. I haven't put a pom pom on it yet, but I'm going to put a pom pom on it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it'll look really good once you have a pom pom and you only see you know you know, that much. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was asking those questions because I'm getting back into, it, winter will be coming, you know, fairly soon. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And I'd like to give a few people hats. So this right here is made from wool of the Andes um, from Knit Picks from the yarn that we had bought a little while ago. And it's a worsted weight and is 100% Peruvian highland wool. Mm -hmm. So it is going to someone in a much cooler climate in the winter time. So hopefully it will keep warm. And it is just a simple, this is a half double crochet on the top and uh, just a simple back loop um, single crochet for the brim. I like so, it. It's nothing, nothing fancy, nothing. I just need to get back into that groove. So, yeah. Well, I like it because it looks very dense. And I've heard that in colder climates, it's not necessarily just the cold. You know, you want to keep that wind out. And right. I think that looks super um, wind proof. Yeah, it's uh, the stitch isn't terribly tight, but it's not, there's not that hole. You can, can't even get my finger through there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's not worldly. I mean, holy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's why I was asking those <laughs> questions. I'm, I'm trying to get back into the groove, but I do like the star pattern for. Uh -huh. for I like that. Mm -hmm way more than decreasing to a tiny hole than doing a small hole draw. Mm -hmm. So what so. did you, what don't you like about doing all the decreases? Because for me, when I did it, and I did decrease a little bit, I started mm -hmm. decreasing about right here. Mm -hmm. um, this, the stitches get very loose towards mm -hmm. the, the top of the hat as mm -hmm. you decrease. And that maybe I may be doing something wrong. I don't think I am because of I've, I've, I have followed a pattern before. I didn't follow a pattern. I just did for this mm -hmm. one. Um, but in the past, I have followed patterns. And uh, it just, they're very loose up top. And I don't really like that. Mm -hmm. I don't like loose stitches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why, are you, why are you smiling? So, but this is a, it, it stayed tight. Uh -huh. So. That's and right. I'm excited, you know, wool keeps people, a lot of hats, commercial hats are acrylic. And um, I feel like, a well, I guess scientifically, they say acrylic keeps you colder than wool because it traps any moisture. It doesn't evaporate as easily. And wool will stay warm even when it's wet. So if somebody's mm -hmm. in the wind, in the snow, you know, driving rain or something, you're going to stay warmer wearing a wool or animal fiber hat than you are wearing a man-made hat. And I just read an article, I um, can't remember what magazine it was, that said cotton kills. So there's all these studies about cotton and people wearing cotton, like primarily hikers and people who go out into extreme weather, they'll wear a cotton layer and cotton kind of stays damp and it keeps your, you know, your body just keeps cooling off and cooling off and cooling off. And you're at greater risk for being, you know, hypothermia or just intensely uncomfortable or things like that. So they recommend, you know, a silk base layer or a wool base layer or things like that. So I just think it's interesting the um, properties of fibers. And my textile book will attest to that. There, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. I haven't mentioned it in a while. Nearly every podcast, oh, you haven't mentioned in a while because we haven't podcasted in a while, but every podcast, not every, but 90 podcast, you will mention that text out. You want to show it? I mean, you might as well. Yeah. Go ahead. You love your textile book. I do. It's infinitely interesting to me. Infinitely interesting. <laughs> there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Lower to my eyebrows, please. Much better. <laughs> <laughs> so you and that textile. Book. You, boo. So, what else you got? Um, that is really all I'm working on. I'm still working on my Stephen West Boneyard shawl. I've kind of stalled on that. It's over there in timeout somewhere because it's just so, you know, it's kind of that V shape and it's just so long at this point it's so it's a slog 
So I needed some hats to work on. I did that. Um, I have some more finishes in my handy dandy Nikki made unicorn bag. Um, so I've just, um, every year I try to donate as many hats as I can. Um, and we did that last year together, but I have made some more hats out of my own hand dyed yarn this year. So I have this one. You've probably already seen the skeins in different videos, but that hat, that's the hurricane hat. This again, probably 80 stitches I cast on. I knit until um, I felt like I was gonna run out of yarn before I finished that. You know, I can't make my brooms too long or I'll run out of yarn. So typically I dye about 50 grams at a time when I'm just experimenting. I like that because I feel like I got a lot of different colors in that hat. So uh, I like how it's got specks of red in there. Right. It just kind of came out that way. So, and then I did this one. Again, another hurricane hat. This looks like it was knit on a bigger needle. Maybe instead of a seven, I used an eight or so. It looks a little wider, so it's going to be a little bit looser. Um, and that's okay. You know, people have different levels of comfort when they want to knit. This is the Twistmas hat out of that weird funky skein that I had. And I enjoyed that. I felt like it showed the yarn off pretty well. So again, oh, it probably told me to do some amount of inches and I just said, okay, I'm done and went on. So I thought about this one. This one. So I thought that was kind of eye-catching. But those are my finished hats so far. Um, I have a big bag that I put them in so I can keep them together for, you know, when cold weather comes. But those are all the finished objects I have. And then I have some more hand-dyed yarn. So we can talk about that after we talk about your finished object. Well, that's all my finished objects was the hat, but I Is do it? have a whip, in, a, a whip in progress. A whip in I progress. I have a whip in progress. <laughs> And let's see, let me move some stuff around. I am making, and I did this with a crafting chat, and I don't know when that's coming out uh, with this video, but here it is. So I can't see you, and there we go. There's that, and this is made with, it just fell down, the Karen... Baby cakes. Baby cake. Is that one of our Michael's purchases? It is one of I our Michael's so. purchases. And for all you crocheters out there, you can probably tell what the stitch is, but Nikki has no idea, does she? Do you? If nope. you get what, what stitch is that, if you can tell me, I'll give you all the monies in the world. Half double crochet. <clears throat> Wrong. Okay. So this was this is the moss stitch. Okay. Um, and I haven't done it in a while, so I thought I'd brush up because mm -hmm. I think I'm going to do a tutorial on it soon, so I figured I'd brush up on it. Mm -hmm. so, Those are very unicorn colors. What is the name on the cake? Here's the rest of it. The name Ooh. is Soft Summer Stripes. We'll say that three times fast. Yeah, no kidding. So, yeah. Those are nice colors. I like that. They are very cool. Is that colors. for somebody or just? Uh, I I have people having babies right now. Uh -huh. Well, not right now, but. Coming up. Coming up. <laughs> and um, it's not necessarily for them, but I am going to have some, you know, ready. Mm-hmm. Nothing's assigned to anybody. You know, one yet. of our former co-workers is having a baby. Really? Well, not uh, him. His, his child is having a baby. We'll have to chat later. I have no idea. Oh, okay. About. I thought you knew. <laughs> okay. No, I don't think I know. Work gossip. Think, All right. Speaking of babies, here's a, a fur baby here. Baby Ruth. There she is. Hi, Ruth. So, she's uh, looking for attention. She looks uh, for very the, disheveled. Like, whoa, I just. She, she just woke up. 
for all, for all the new people out there. I'm sorry, I did not greet the new people. Welcome to the channel. We are your a second language. That's Miss Nikki and I'm Princeton. <laughs> this is the dog of the channel. We're just chatting here. like we're old friends. Like, hey, y'all, this yeah. is what we're working on. <laughs> so you, she will occasionally be on the channel and she looks different nearly every time because her hair grows so fast and then we cut it off and then it just grows back. So that's Miss Does she wears doggy makeup? She does. I put a little rouge. That, wow. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> that go on the cheeks, the rouge. Look at her. Little rouge, little eyeshadow. She does not need it. Do her eyelashes. She's precious. Lipstick. She's precious. <laughs> so there she is. So yeah. Um, you don't have anything else, do you? I have um some yarn that I've dyed. Well, I've got two more quick ones. Let me show you. Okay, go quick. for it. Go for it. So another practice with the moss stitch, I'd made a little washcloth from some mm -hmm. cotton yarn that we had did a knit picks yarn haul with. So um, someone had asked me um, on that yarn haul video, how does this color stay uh, withstand washes in use? Mm-hmm. I will say that the Knit Picks yarn, and this is, I don't have it with me, multi dishy is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, it does do a better job than the sugar and cream. It does really? do a better job than um, the peaches and cream. Really? Yes. So uh, it doesn't seem to fade. And I've only washed, I have washed cloths we use at home. Not a whole lot of times, but maybe... 10 times or so and uh -huh. it looks just as new as uh -huh. this is the un, unused one it looks just as new so I feel like sugar and cream and peaches and cream have changed I know they went through um a corporate change some years ago but I when I started knitting which was you know about 15 years ago now I got some sugar and cream and peaches and cream and my practice pieces were dishcloths and I gave them to my mother and I went to her house a couple of weeks ago and she had one of the, just, it looks just like new. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I understand when people are saying that things are fading, but I guess I just haven't worked with it enough or consistently enough to see that. Yeah. But that's a shame. Yeah, it is. And obviously. No ends woven in. Not yet. Not yet. And um, I just got one more. It's the same thing. It's another moss stitch. I mm -hmm. said I was practicing. Mm -hmm. um, and this is uh, hooks and threads cotton yarn, I believe it's called. Mm. I can't remember. Um, is that Michael? So yeah. That would be loops and threads. Loops and threads. There mm -hmm. you go. Yeah. So just another. Oh, there we go. Moss mm -hmm. stitch. So I had to get my practice on. And that's mm -hmm. what I was doing. Those so, are nice. So do you yeah. have like a giant cabinet full of dishcloths now? I do. <laughs> I do. I do. I Christmas probably have is coming. Christmas is coming. And who knows? There, there might be some business venture in the future. Who knows? Right. Who knows? Right. So. Okay. So I'm at okay. a stopping point. <laughs> Progress. Um, hashtag I, progress. Hashtag progress. So I did. I have been dyeing a few more skeins of yarn. Uh, we. I did get some bear yarn from Knit Picks. I don't have any laying around, but I have been experimenting with dyeing that and using up the last little bits of my Lion Brand. Um, it's not called Shepherd's Worsted. It's Lion Brand. Something else. I thought you knew everything. Uh, I do eventually. It's somewhere in there. It'll come to me when I'm driving to work tomorrow. Like, oh, yeah, that. But um, so now that's going to bother me. But anyway, um, this was some of the leftover line brand. So all these yarns started out as cream. My colors aren't looking very. There we go. So I like that one. I've got some mauve, some light purple, some dark purples in there. And this one I kind of played with a little bit over that. I think I'm going to do a hat with it 
So it's got kind of a pumpkin-y color on the middle, kind of this harvesty color. There's even a tiny little bit of green in there. So I think I'm gonna do some color work with this hat and it looks to me like fall leaves. So I think that'll be really fun. And this one, I think started out life as blue and then I didn't really enjoy it. So I over dyed it, I dunked it in some yellow and we get cool greens. So I kind of like all these together. I like that green one. Yeah. So I, I am really big on over dyeing. If I don't like it, it goes, it gets another bath. So my first um, knit pick stain, I think I dyed. I got the knit pick, this is Swish Worsted. So Swish Worsted is 100% merino. I love the way this feels and I love the way it looks. So it's kind of um, those same kind of pinky purple colors. It's coming out more blue-ish on screen, but there's a lot of pink in there. And I've got some darker pinks, some lighter pinks. Swish feels amazing. I love it. So I bought a bunch of that to experiment with. So this is the nitpick Swish Horsted. And one more that I dyed because the holidays are coming. I got some bare wool of the Andes. And when I, I keep saying bare, and it's not on here, bare as in, you know, naked. So <laughs> it was this, all of this cream right here. So I put these colors on this. This is food coloring that I've used. Um, I think this is the one that I use my Dharma acid dyes on, but the rest of these were colored with food coloring, including this one. So this is kind of a Christmassy kind of colorway here. And I tried to do some speckly kind of things. I have another technique I wanna try, but this is what I came up with. So I'm gonna make maybe a cowl out of this. This is very traditional red and green Santa's coming to town kind of colorway. So that is what I have been working on in the dye kitchen. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see how this knits up. You're going to have quite a collection of uh, hand-dyed yarn on your I wall. I have been enjoying it. I really, really, really have. It's been really fun. Um, I'm going to have to start giving some away. So um, because I, I just can't keep everything. I want to, but... Can you do that again? How do you scan that up so easily and so quickly? Because <laughs> it was already half scanned. I didn't really unscan it. Oh. So, uh oh. Now you did it. Let's see. So if it comes like this, I will say the knit picks yarn, I had to add some more ties to it because they come with, you know, these little bitty ties that they put on. I didn't feel like that was enough to put in my dye pot or to hand dye it without it becoming a tangled mess. So to scan it up, Twist, twist. I'm holding this in. I can't get it all in frame. Twist, twist, twist. Just hold. Twist, twist. A little bit more. Twist. And then kind of tuck it in one end. And you have to work with it. So it comes out like that. And you kind of twist it a little bit more. And it'll be a little bit better. That's not how it happens when I do it. <laughs> So those are my dying adventures. That's what I've been working on. It's too hot. It's so hot now that, yeah. it's, you know, this is kind of an evening, nighttime project or way, way early morning on the weekend project. But I think I've got enough so far. I try to dye things when I get inspiration to do it. So um, I felt like Christmas the other day. <laughs> and fall and a little bit of spring but no summer, no summer at all, because we're in the middle of it, we're in it. But well, I think they look great. I really like that green one. I think that one's the really? best Really? I like mm -hmm. that one. I like that one. And it, like I said, it didn't start out, it did not go the way I thought it was gonna go. And I said, well, back in the pot you go. 
So, and I got something I liked a whole lot better. But Ooh. that's all I have been working on. Oh, I forgot that one. To hold up with the family. So, that's all I've been working on. Well, cool. You got anything else you want to show them? Nope. All right. Well. What about you? No, I've been uh, working on that baby blanket yeah. pretty religiously, so I haven't really done much else. I actually whipped up <clears throat> this hat basically for the podcast. I did this today, so mm-hmm. <laughs> busted it out real quick. Looking at my needle, I think I'm getting ready to have a problem. My uh, joint uh, is feels like it's getting loose. I might have to get a drop of glue on there. Oh, ah, but I love the hmm. okay <laughs> knitting drama. Oh, I know. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> all right, well, everybody, you uh, thank you for uh clicking on the video and hanging out with us. Don't forget to hit, hit that like button and also subscribe because if Miss Stinky's going to give away some yarn, you won't want to miss that. Uh huh. <laughs> so, yeah, anything else you want to tell them? I think that's it. All right. Well, appreciate you guys for hanging out with us, and we will see you all at the next video. Adios.